All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Living the Dream podcast. Today on the show, we have Bobby Aldridge, who is the founder of BAM Metrics and an athletic trainer. Bobby, how you doing? Good. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, of course. Thanks for coming on. And we like to jump right in. So if you could start with telling us a little bit about yourself and what you like to do for fun, that'd be great. Um, well, I'm Bobby Aldridge, and I used to um, graduated from the University of San Francisco, got a degree in kinesiology, uh, became a trainer. But before that, I live in Marin County, right outside um, uh, San Francisco. And uh, I love to, we have great mountain right here to go mountain biking. So I take my kids mountain biking up there. And uh, I love to play golf. Golf's my life. I'm the old man now. So golf's the game and uh, try to get out there once a week when I can. Uh, pretty much the, the most fun I like to do is help my kids become better athletes. Cause being an athletic trainer, I've been helping kids for years, move on to the next level. Uh, and even some of my kids have made it to the pros. So to help my own kids now is like a little lab experiment. It's a lot of fun uh, and exciting to help them. So um, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Well, tell us a bit more about BAM Metrics and why you started it and what it's about. Um, BAM Metrics came out of I've been training for thirty years, and uh, when I'd leave my professionals or travel my clients would get a little bit lost with what they were doing. And I'd say, oh, just put your foot here, put your hand there, do it like this. And they wouldn't replicate what I was teaching them. And with the help of the mat and the different tools that I have, I can now teach them, do this exercise, put your foot here, do this. And they do it perfectly. So my real goal now is to inspire more people to like the healthcare industry is to get people to use the tools to help average people and pros like before COVID I worked with seven major leaguers down in San Diego uh, um, pitchers and uh, we worked on a couple of different exercises that they had never done before and I was like shocked I said you guys have been doing this for 15 years right and to have a professional athlete not know four exercises that were so simple on the body but make you move better and help your performance because mobility is the key if we can get you to move better, your performance will improve and you'll play with less pain. So my goal is to really help the healthcare industry reduce the pain that's going on out there. And one of the kids that I was working with, the pitcher with the Yankees, he was trying to do this exercise and he wanted to keep adding weight. And I said, no, no, don't add weight. Let's change your base of support. So I'm using the mat and I said, change your feet, move it in one box. And he starts going and I said, good, now move it in one box. Keep going, good. And he still wanted to raise the weight. And I said, no, no, no. Now put your feet in front of each other, box in front of box. So he goes along and I showed him how to do it. So I went across the mat, foot in front of foot, did it for him. He goes one, he goes two on the third one, he flips over and falls. And I put that on my Instagram. And I said to him, I said, do you see how we don't have to raise the weight? We change the base of support, get your core to work better, which is going to help your anti-rotators. And anyway, so this kid, this kid's like, wow, he's all, you made that look so easy. And I said, yeah, I've been doing this a long time and my body knows that. So these things aren't difficult. It's a matter of you don't know what you don't know. Okay. Like I tell the story when I was a kid in first training, I jumped in and I was the man. I, two years into this, I have one certification, my degree from USF. And I know everything because it's CSCS, Certified Strength and Conditioning Specialist. That's all I knew. But then after doing it for 30 years and having 13 different certifications, there's so much information out there that you're always learning. So um, there's just a lot to teach people. And the tools that I have, BAM Metrics, simplifies movement for the average person up to the pro. So um, yeah, you've got to check out the tools and see them. Go to the website, uh, bam-metrics.com to see it. Um, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. That's awesome. And so, uh, let's just jump into your dreams and goals. I know you said one was to help the healthcare industry reduce pain just across yeah. the board, whether it be average people or athletes, are there any other dreams and goals that you want to talk about real quick? Uh, yeah, well, again, my kids, I'd love to get my kids to their most potential. And, uh, it's, it's a definite challenge being dad. They've been around me for so many years that, you know, they've heard it, they've heard it, they've heard it. So it's always challenging to get them to do 
uh, the stuff that I want them to do because uh, they're totally normal kids. <laughs> uh, my son's a freshman. My daughter's a junior. And uh, she's a very high level golfer down in uh, the IMG Academy in Florida right now. And uh, she swings 109 miles an hour. So she swings faster than most men. And uh, she hits the ball a mile. And uh, we're trying to control her, her speed and her energy. So, and then when I got my son on the other side, he, he doesn't play golf because he thinks it's boring, but he goes out and he swings 119 miles an hour, hits the ball 330 yards. And he wants to play basketball, baseball, and football. So uh, uh, his favorite sport is basketball, which is normal. I love basketball. I played basketball, went to university of San Francisco, played basketball and baseball, but he loves uh, basketball. And I kind of held him back from that because I think baseball is the easier game to play. You know, you can fail 70% of the time and you're a 10 time all-star. Yep. So what, what business in the world could you do that? You know, that is, I think baseball is the game. Um, and so uh, you just got to learn to fail a lot and it's okay. Uh, kind of like what we're talking about today in, in life. That the more you fail, the more you learn. You never learn when you succeed because you're on top of the world, right? But every time you fail, if you just look at what you did wrong or what you could do better or what, just take the next hurdle. I always say it's like hurdles, right? You got all these hurdles in life. You could jump the hurdle, you can go around the hurdle, you can go under the hurdle, or you could stomp the hurdle. There's always yeah. different ways to go about it. There is no one way. Uh, and again, that took me 35 years to learn. Um, uh, you know, that's a path of, of experience, wisdom, and listen more than talk. So, mm. yeah. So tell us about some of the simple exercises we could all be doing right now that would increase mobility and redu reduce pain in a way that's like practical for the common day person. Yeah, well, the wall windmill is a fantastic one. You literally stand up against the wall, you put your hands, the back of your hands on the wall, your head, your shoulders, hips, ankles, calves, everything's touching the wall. And then you're just gonna glide to the left and then go glide back to the right. And you're gonna notice, just go as far as you're comfortable, but don't move your arms, move your torso, your upper body. So your arms are up at shoulder height, but you're just gonna glide the wall. This is one of the, my favorites for everyone to do. My athletes, when they show up, they go right into the wall windmill. And we change your foot position based on my mat has boxes. So we go one box, then we go two boxes, then we go three boxes, then four, and then back to one. So if you're real flexible, you get out to five boxes. But what it's doing is taking out the rotation in your body, even your fingers and hands, when you first start, you won't get your fingers on the wall. You'll have like a little bit off, a little rotate in the forearm. But the body's connected from the base of the head to the bottom of the feet is fascia. Fascia isn't muscle, it wraps the muscle. So when we move this fascia, it, after doing this exercise, you're taller. I, ha I had an NFL, ex-NFL guy at my clinic in um, Kuala Lai over in Hawaii. I was working at the Four Seasons for a week, training all the members and the guests and the Guy was an ex-football player, 67 years old, played for the Kansas City Chiefs. He's six four, I think about, and just a big man, right? He's a lineman. So he starts doing the wall windmill. And we've got like, you know, six or seven people standing there watching. And as he's doing it, people are like, he's literally getting taller. Like he was opening up. So this old man that was kind of hunched and bunched, all of a sudden starts, boom, boom opening up because he's an athlete his body's moved before but he's never done this before and he gets off the wall and he's like god i feel so much looser right now and it was one little exercise i showed him so anyway that's the wall windmill we could talk about it forever but then there's the runner stretch which is great to do at your desk so you put your feet in front of each other you kneel down with the back knee behind your front foot so you know the distance between your feet that's how you get it so on my mat, you would put your foot at one and your, my back foot would be at, <coughs> Bless you. thank you. Uh, my back foot would be at 34 because that's my height, right? The length of my leg. I've done this where I've knelt down before. So now I don't have to kneel down anymore. So now I've got my number. Now I'm going to 
straighten out both my legs. I'm going to hinge from my hips with my hands on the desk, right? So as I push my hips back, I'm stretching. What it'll feel like to you guys is your calf and your hamstring. But as you stay there, because your feet are in a line, it starts pulling the rotation out from your foot to your calf, to your hip, all the way up into your neck. So that one exercise will lengthen your whole body out. So if you did the wall windmill and the runner stretch every day, you're going to help your body lengthen out. Very simple to do. And then you just throw in there some medicine ball push-ups on the mat and a pal off walkout. You could do them medicine ball push-ups today and pal off walkout tomorrow. Well, now you're working the rotational muscles and you're working the upper body rotational muscles and then just throw in a wall squat. So you sit against the wall. So if I was going to give you the simplest routine, if you did your wall windmill push-ups, you did your runner stretch and your pal off walkout. And then on the third day, you picked another exercise, which I would make a rotation. So I'd put your spread feet wide, hand on the ground and rotate open. That exercise with a wall squat, you'd cover the body right there. So you've only done six exercises, three days, two each day, and your body would open up and you take out that rotation. So a lot of hips and back that people are hurting would start to open up and feel better. Um, so those are the simple ones I could give you right off the start that I would throw at almost every person, unless they had a shoulder injury or something was going on. We got to work around injuries sometimes. Uh, but the wall, wall windmill you can do even pretty much injured. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Do you have like a book or a YouTube video or a video course or something that you put out with yeah. these stretches? I do. I actually, ha I train trainers. So I, I go and do uh, CEUs with a continuing education. So I'll have 30, you know, physical therapists or trainers in a room and I'll go through certain exercises depending on the group. Um, I usually, the first question I ask when I get there is what certifications are in the room. So I speak their language uh, because if I speak Chinese to somebody who speaks Hungarian, they're going to look at me like I'm crazy. So I have to go, oh, they're NASM. So I know how they assess their people. They're FMS, functional movement screen. I know how, how they assess their people. That's what's been difficult for me over the years is having all these certifications. When I go assess a person, I have all 13 different ways to assess them, right? So I might pull one from here, one from there. It's never the same because it depends on the person. So my, my answer to a lot of questions is it depends. Um, cause people will say, well, what's the one exercise, right? Like you said today, again, it depends, but I'm throwing the wall windmill cause that'll pretty much help the world if they would do it more often. The runner stretch would help the world. Um, um, so that's why, uh, but yeah, I have, so I have exercises and then on Instagram, I have a bunch of stuff that I have been doing for years, uh, getting out videos and, and different quotes and things I give people, um, and then Facebook and, Inst and YouTube, I'll put stuff out too. Uh, but most of it's on my website now. I've been trying to put the content into the website and get more people to come to the website uh, because I've been blogging. So I'm blogging more often trying to, because a lot of people want to swing faster. Like I said, my daughter swings 109 miles an hour. So guys are like, what is she doing? And uh, I go, it's these simple exercises plus the swing speed drill that I do with the stick that we have. Uh, that most golfers have in their bag already and they don't even know it so uh, that's our yeah. secret at the, at the end of the podcast today if they stay on <laughs> <laughs> well there we go there we go awesome well any other dreams or goals you want to talk about real quick before we move on to more questions um no i think that's that's pretty good right there sounds yeah. good well if there are one or two people that you can meet and this could be a specific person or a type of person that could help you take the next step towards really helping the healthcare industry as a whole reduce that pain, who would they be and how would they do it? Well, I think one of the, well, any one of the sharks, you know, I, I like Mark Cuban a lot. I think he's real genuine in the way he does his stuff. And uh, I've always loved his, his enthusiasm, you know, for basketball and that sort of thing. So when I saw him on the shark tank, I enjoyed that. Um, I don't have big enough revenue. That's why I've never gone on the shark tank. I'm kind of a um, hands-on, people call me, I go in. That's what I've been doing with my tools for years. You know, I only order a, a few thousand at a time kind of thing. So it's not like I'm doing 10,000 a month 
kind of things. And that's what the Shark Tank's all about. So I'd love to sit down with Mark Cuban and have a real talk with, hey, Mark, I have something real. And I could really help, like, for example, his basketball team. And I, I, I could say right now, Mark, I'll show you four exercises your trainer's never done with your athletes. And these four should be done consistently two to four times a week and sit there and have a talk with him. And he'd be like, no, what do you mean? Um, so I think he'd have great touch, Mark. Um, another person out there, um, I, don't, I, I was thinking as a business guy, but probably some uh, high powered people that would change healthcare. Like, do you really wanna make that change and cut down cost? And, you know, uh, I know they've been trying to make it where people, everybody can have insurance, you know? This is the kind of thing that could make that where they could give my tools to everyone, right? Give them out and then have check-ins every few months to see how they're doing and teach online. We could have now that we're all used to Zoom is we, I could teach 10,000 people, 100,000 people online and go, hey guys, on Monday you meet at five for 15 minutes and I'm gonna show you three exercises. Good, see ya next week. And so once a week, I'm teaching them three exercises. Just work on these three exercises. Do this one on Monday, this one on Tuesday, this one on Wednesday, and then go back to on Wednesday to the one you did on Monday or on Thursday. So we could teach right there on camera. And then you have check-ins, like I said, where they actually come in and I go, hey, how are you feeling? Do you have any pain? How's your hips? What's going on? And then we could go through a few things to say, oh, why don't you try this and get specific with them? And I'll see you in, in four months right? And they take off again. But then 10 years later, that person wouldn't have a hip replacement or a knee problem or a back problem or a shoulder issue, unless they had a car accident or something happened. But we'd be taking care of people and the physical therapist would actually be able to help these people because of the tools. They would check the numbers, write it down. Oh, his foot's at 40. And then four months later, oh, he's out to 42. Great. He's improving just a little bit. We don't have to make giant and we're not trying to make people fit as people. So a lot of times when I go into physical therapy clinics, the physical therapist will take it personally that I'm telling them they don't know what they're doing. You got to use my tools. And I don't mean that to them. I'm there to help the customer. I had 37 physical therapists in one room. And uh, I said, can you, you guys know the staggered stance minivan walk? And they go, oh yeah, yeah. they all raise their hand. Give me three, pay, three uh, therapists out here. So I give one the yellow band, one the green band, one the blue band. I said, go ahead, start doing it. And then I said to all the other physical therapists, what would you change about their movement as they're doing it? It's basically you put a mini band on your ankles, stagger the stance, and then start moving across the room. So the, the um, therapists start doing it. And then all the other therapists go, hey, move your feet further apart. Put your feet here, closer on that. No, 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 stagger more. So they're telling therapists how to adjust. So what's going to happen to the patient when they go home? if therapists are being adjusted, right? Yep. Because everybody, everybody, do you want to be this wide, right? You want to be this wide or you want to be two feet apart? Where is the width? So after they stopped moving, I said, hey, okay, flip the mats over. You stand at one mat, one box, you stand at two box, you do three box. And the girl that was with the tightest band, I put it three boxes on purpose. So as she starts moving, I said, now what would you change? So the other two, they didn't say a word. They're doing it perfectly. The girl that was three boxes apart, they go, hey, hey, move in one box. You're too wide. So they were already speaking the language. So the nice thing is my therapy would be if you're going to do the mini band walk and you start with the lightest band, week one, we do one box. Week two, we do two boxes. Week three, we do three boxes. And in the fourth week, we move up to the next band. So now we have a language to say, hey, they're right on track. Or no, this person isn't progressing fast enough. And we know it based on the boxes of how they're doing it. We can actually see the progress. Um, so that's, that's what simplifies the movement or the tools like that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I love that. How long has uh, BAM metrics been around? Like your tools? Uh, well, my, my mat's been around for, man, I, Time goes by so fast, maybe four years uh, on the mat, five years. And then all of it, maybe 10 to 12. Um, when I started thinking about it, I was trying to help these ladies at the gym that were 
75 years old. And I'd have them lay on their back and try to stretch with a yoga strap and they couldn't hold it long enough, their hands would give out. So I started tying it to a machine behind them and said, just lay there and then move your leg back and forth, right? So I went on the internet to look for something to order for them so they could lay there and stretch and there wasn't anything. And to this day, I don't know what I was thinking or how it even got started to actually try to find a manufacturer in China to try to get all this to work. And it took me one year to get my first prototype for the vest that I have. That it's a stretching device that you lay down in, put your hands back, you just lay there and stretch back and forth your hips, but it has numbers on it. So you know you're at 15 and then I can adjust it to 14, 13, 12. I did it like a golf handicap. The lower it goes, the better. So um, anyway, so that that's how I started out was with the vest. And then I was helping these pro golfers with movement. So when they would leave, they would travel with a yoga strap and I started drawing lines on it. And I, one day I'm like, oh, I should put numbers on it. Then I could place their hands. So I made this, this uh, strap with numbers on it, one through 44. And I could just get them to place their hands, rotate and open. So now I can teach people how to do that with the numbers instead of just drawing lines on a yoga strap. Um, and then a few years later, I was working and I was trying to get these guys to do um, movement with the, with the stretching their hips. And I couldn't figure out where to put their feet because they change it. They adjust and then they go, no, no, move it back a couple inches. No, no, move it out a couple inches. So I said, man, I should use my strap on the floor and just start placing their feet, put kneel down at zero, step out to 42, then switch it. But then I was right next to a mat and I said, oh my God, I should put my strap on the mat. So I literally sewed my mat, my strap on the mat. And then I used that for a few, you know, few weeks. And then I was like doing mini band walks. And I said, no, no, put your feet closer, put your feet wider, put your feet closer. And then I said, oh shit, I should put boxes on the mat with the lines. So it was like, these things came up as things were going. And so it's been, like I said, 12 years of messing around and doing things. And um, the reason I like doing these podcasts is to get the word out because it's like, it's a little gem there to help you at home. And COVID has been great. My business went up drastically because of COVID. I had people all over the country calling me, Bob, I can't get to the gym. What am I going to do? And they're freaking out. Um, and I said, do you have your mat, your blocks, your bands, and your medicine ball? You're ready to go. And uh, one of my favorite stories, the kid on the front page of my website during COVID calls me. He goes, Bob, what am I doing? We have this conversation. Two and a half months in, they open up golf again. So if you go to the front page of my website, you can see his quote. I literally took the quote right off his text. I didn't change anything on there. And then I said, hey, hey, um, Forbes, send me a, a video of you swinging. So he sent me a video too of him swinging. So I have that on there. So Forbes says to me, holy crap, do I have a new gear? I was swinging three woods, 120 miles plus. I was hitting the ball over 350 and my friend was just shocked with what he was doing because his friend usually drives the ball with him. He was driving it past him with his three wood because his, his driver was broken, so he wasn't using it. And he goes, I have no shoulder pain, no back pain. And dude, I'm, I'm so happy. And if you read the text, it's basically something like that. And um, um, I knew the stuff worked, but I didn't know it worked as well as as well as I was seeing, right? So I was like, man, this is really working. So I had player after player after player swinging faster, getting more powerful, having less pain because they weren't in the gym like deadlifting only, right? Because you'll give them the simple exercise I just told you at the beginning, the windmill, the runner stretch, do these push-ups and do these pal off. They'll skip those things because they'll think they're too easy and they'll want to do something more aggressive. And it's like the little muscles inside, the little engines, those parts protect the big muscles. And so if we can reduce the rotation in somebody's body, that's usually what's causing pain, whether your hips are rotated this way or this way, or your neck or hips and shoulders, there's rotated one way or the other. If we can take out that rotation, you will feel so much better. Um, so sorry for the long, long-winded answer, but it's been about 12 years. <laughs> Ah, I love that. 
<laughs> I have a little bit of lower back pain. I'm like, I'm gonna start trying these exercises. <laughs> yeah, look, well, one one I can get rid of it instantly is do a wall squat. Push your go go to the wall. Put your back up on the wall. Push from your heels. Sit down a little above 90 degrees. So you want your hips above your knees, not level above. Push from your heels. So make sure your feet are a little in front of your knees. And as you're pushing, your back is flattening into the wall. So you want to make sure you get that arch out of the back and push it into the wall. That'll reduce some of that pain. And then another one is your hip flexor. So if you kneel down on the ground and then squeeze your butt, so you kneel down and put your other foot out in front and then squeeze your butt, that'll pull that hip flexor apart in the front, which gets short when we sit. So as I sit here for an hour or two, when I stand up, this is short, right? So that's what's gonna pull on my back. So they're gonna fight each other. So if you can flatten out and neutralize and then open up that hip flexor, boom, that'll feel better, so. That's so smart. Quick fix. I should Venmo you a thousand dollars for that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, what is the most important one or two things that everyday people can do to really help you accomplish your dreams and goals? other than knowing Mark Cuban? Uh, everyday people? Yeah, just people listening to this podcast, people who oh, if they could, meet at the if grocery they, store. If they knew somebody that could reach out and help me with the business part of connecting um, um, or sharing it with other people, um, put it on, I, I need an influencer. I was going to start looking for a big influencer. Um, not too big, but big enough that I can handle the volume and numbers. Um, that would be fantastic. It'd be, reach out to me. I just want to share it more with people. Um, I enjoy doing these podcasts and talking about it and answering questions. I love when they go live on the podcast and people are literally asking questions and we're just, because it's so simple. Uh, the body's super complex, but sometimes it's so simple and you make one adjustment and boom, that pain's gone. And I, I I've been doing this for so many years that I've seen so many things, so many things wrong with the body and so many people that have been to physical therapy, chiropractors, like for example, chiropractors back in the day, all they would do is adjust. So when they adjust the bones, what pulls on the bones, the muscles. So the muscles would pull it back out. So if you didn't see your chiropractor twice a week, right, then you, you say, ah, oh, back, I hurt right? Well, that's the reason is the muscles pull on the bones. So what I do is make you your own chiropractor. I'm teaching you how to move. And as you move more often properly, motion is lotion. So your body, as you move, it's like brushing your teeth. Do you brush your teeth once a week, once every two weeks, nope. right? We usually brush twice a day. So what have we moved twice a day? That's like brushing our body. And it is that simple. As long as you give it stimulus in different paths, reduce rotation and move all the joints, all the joints are connected, right? So if I pull on, if I made string across my shoulders, down my hip and I pulled right here, what's it gonna do? It's gonna move across, right? So as you pull that everything moves together. So we have to make these adjustments ourselves and teach ourselves how to be our chiropractors. And that's what I do when people order my tools, they'll get exclusive videos that will show them literally how to foam roll, how to work into the muscles, what to do this for, how's it helping you? How does that tool help you specifically? And um, yeah, so that's, that's what I give people when they, when they order the tools. There we go. I love it. Well, let's jump into our thriving three now. First question is what's your favorite book, movie, or podcast? Pick one. Well, of course, your podcast. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, um, well, movie, I was like watching it last night, Shawshank Redemption, but uh, another one that I really like is The Greatest Game Ever Played. I like a lot of sport movies, Rudy. Um, I'm all about the kid that just pushes hard. Uh, that's my favorite thing. Uh, Rudy is like one of my favorite, but the... Uh, um, uh, yeah, that's definitely, there we those go. are my favorites. Yeah. And what's one way you like to take care of yourself? Um, 
Well, I, I do a little bit of everything. So moderation, I've, al I've always been kind of a moderation guy after, after being in shape for so many years. Uh, I've backed off to being moderate with family. I've been married 18 years, two kids, all the stuff that we do now. Um, I think moderation is the key. So I mix in a little bit of exercise, not meaning I'll, I'll put a time aside of 30 minutes or an hour. I might work out with different clients throughout the day. I'll pick one or two exercises, each client showing them how to do it, spend time. Um, and then I, I'm always trying to learn like what we can do better with our eating. You know, like I've tried keto, I've tried all the different diets. I've been through all that. I was the first before and after picture out there. I was the guy that was 60 pounds overweight, lost the weight and was as ripped as possible. Um, Bill Phillips, you're too young. He was the first guy, first book uh, that, they had the before and afters and there was a big contest for a hundred thousand dollars and I wanted to win that contest. So I went all out. And I, at that time I gained 60 pounds on purpose by drinking five quarts of half and half a day for seven straight weeks, five quarts every day of half and half. So I gained 60 pounds of fat. I was fatty, took the pictures, lost all the weight in two and a half months. And then put in my pictures for the, to win the contest. And they said, my pictures were digitized. There's no way I could have done that in the time I did it. So anyway, long story short, I, they kicked me out of the contest. So I called ProSource, the biggest supplement company. I said, I used your product, got a great result. They called me back the next day, wanted to shoot me in LA that week and uh, became their spokesperson for the next five years. And uh, Bill Phillips, I was at the show and my friends are all, Bob, go show Bill your abs because he said they're false, right? He did, digitized it, right? And then I went over and I chatted with Bill Phillips and, you know, I said, man, I worked as hard as I could to win your contest. I killed myself and told him all the things I did. Um, an hour in the morning on the stair climber on 10 to 14, then an hour at night and an hour of weights in the middle of the day. And I, every single day, as you cut calories going down, so you have no energy. I was on there at one time on the last few days of the contest, just stripping. And the, my brother comes up to talk to me on the, on the um, Stairmaster. And he said, Bob, you got like a three second delay because my brain wasn't getting enough calories and, and carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. so, uh, um, so anyway, I've, I've been through the gamut of that. Uh, so I understand what people have to go through too, because you don't have to do it in two and a half months. We could do it in two and a half years. We could do it in 10 years. All I ask people to do is do a little bit every day, at least moving towards your goal. You don't have to be perfect, but you can move towards your goal. And instead of drinking uh, a bottle of wine every night, drink half a bottle of wine. So uh, little bits at a time over time, you'll, it's consistency that wins. There we go. And what is one action step you can take right now to either meet Mark Cuban or find that person that's going to help you out on the business side of BAM metrics? Uh, I probably have to hound him, calling him, emailing him constantly. Um, I just know how busy he is and I've been trying to get bigger things going uh, before I chatted with him, but I probably need to have that conversation with him, probably a sit down and get some mentorship from him, that sort of thing. Uh, uh, what do you recommend? What do you think I should be doing to get that to happen? Yeah, yeah. You know, there's a thing out there. There's like a saying out there that's like two degrees of separation, three degrees of separation from uh, Mark. Yep. So I would, yep. I would be asking myself, who can I talk to? Who can I access that is easier to access that has direct access to Mark? And like, you know, in, in sales, they usually call it like a gatekeeper. And if you can get in real good with that gatekeeper or the gatekeeper to the gatekeeper to Mark Cuban, and you like build a relationship with them, which will probably be a lot easier to do because they're often yeah. overlooked because everybody's like, I just want to get to Mark. But if you mm -hmm. actually care for them as a human, genuinely, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you might be able to get to Mark a little better. Another thing to ask might be like, where is he at right now? And then just go there. 
<laughs> uh-huh. That might be a little well, crazy. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, I know I know where he is when the games are being played. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. at he's at he's at the games, but I'm sure people walk up to him all the time. Hey Mark, I want to talk to you. I got a product. You know, it's like you know, you kind of have to get their real time and then you have to hit them with something that you know gets them to believe in it pretty quickly. You know the yeah, other thing you could do. This is crazy, but and I don't know if you have like the discretionary funds to do it. You look like you do. Um, he, <laughs> there's a book called Giftology, and in Giftology, he, t- the author talks about meeting Tony Robbins or getting in with Tony Robbins, and the whole idea is that you build relationships and you break down the gate to somebody's life by giving them a gift, and so maybe if you gifted your BAM metrics equipment to what team does Mark own? Dallas. Dallas Mavericks, right? Yeah, Dallas Mavericks. Yep. If you like gift like all of your equipment to all the members of the Dallas Mavericks, just there you guys go. If there are results, tell me. That might get you a meeting with Mark. It, it's just hard because I have to show them how to use it. They have to use it properly. And it's that's why it's always kind of like if if you get those guys, you have especially pro athletes. Pro athletes sometimes are the di- most difficult to work with because they've seen it all. They've been around it a long time. And if you're a new new guy coming to them, I had a pro boxer. His dad was there and he, the gym owner said, can you, can you show my pro boxer some of the stuff you were showing us at our gym? That's why I was there to talk to the owner. And I said, sure. So we go over and talk about the medicine ball pushups. And the dad goes, we do medicine ball pushups. Like shuts me down like that. Right. And I go, Hey, wait. So I said, that's great. Let's, let's do this. So I get down, I start doing the pushups and I do 28 of them going in, going out, going in, going out. I jump up and I go, all right, let's see what you can do. So he does seven pretty good eight on nine. He flips off the ball and falls on the floor. And the dad kind of looked at me like, Hmm, cause he's 23. I'm 51 and I just smoked him. So then I go, let me show you one other exercise. So I take him over to the cable machine. I put his feet, we're using my mat. I put my feet in line. So they're in direct line and I grab 66% of my body weight. Okay. So we both weigh 220. He's 220. I'm 220. So I do it and I get off and I go, so here we go. I hand it to him. He's like, Oh, it's a little heavy. Kind of, he didn't expect that. Then he gets down, he starts moving all over the place. And I go, no, no, the weight's too heavy. You can't do that. Let me cut it in half. And he's all, no, I can do it. I said, no, you're not doing it right. You're falling over. You can't fall over. So I cut it in half, right? Put it in there. He starts doing, he's still moving all over the place. So I said, you're a professional boxer, but if I was going to hit you, I'm going to hit you with more force from my toe, through my hip, through my shoulder, right into your face. The way you punch, you punch like a jellyfish. (laughs) And I said, you have to learn to transfer the weight based on your core and how your body moves. And I said, the medicine ball pushup and that out and that um, split stance press would help you drastically get more powerful with your punch. So then the dad goes, what else would you show them? (laughs) (laughs) So if you don't put, put them in their place and show them what they don't know right away, right. And get something going. A lot of times they'll just shut you down. They won't listen. Uh, Cause like I always say, people don't know what they don't know. You know, they think they know, but they don't. So anyway. <laughs> okay. New plan, new plan, new plan. Take your equipment, go to Dallas and show the team like after a practice or something and mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. do like do a demo for one of the athletes and then be like, and I can improve all of y'all's performance like this and then work with their trainer or something to like get to mark. Well, you know, the, 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 it's the hardest thing to do because a lot of times those trainers, when I come in, they get threatened by me. Like I could take their job, like, fuck, Bob's way better than I am. Like, yeah. that's what they worry about. And I had that happen when I was um, younger. I went to, uh, I knew the Oakland A's uh, head guy and he said, hey, go meet Billy Bean. And I said, okay. So I go down and I'm standing there going in the tunnel and I was down at spring training and this guy yells, Bobby Aldridge. And I'm like, who knows me here? Like I'm nobody. Right. And comes over and he goes, Hey, Bobby, I'm Billy Bean. And I go, how'd you know it was me? And he goes, I have your card. I couldn't get it out of my wife's hand last night. 
because I had a before and after picture, the ripped guy and the fat guy. So he's just making fun. And he says, go on inside and talk to Clarence. I'll be in about 20 minutes. I've got interviews right now. Meet me inside. Go see Clarence. He's our head strength and conditioning coach. So I go in and I say, hey, Clarence, how you doing? I'm Bobby Aldridge. And uh, Billy told me to come in and say hi to you, da, da, da. So he, he like looks at me and like walks off, right? And I'm like, okay, kind of like didn't know what to do. So I kind of walk around, I'm in the weight room and I'm looking around and I go in and I see the guys working out. So I kind of sit down and start watching and they're chatting, they're chatting. And all of a sudden Dave Justice comes in. You remember him, baseball player? Dave I Justice? Know, but... for... oh, okay, he was, he was big time with the Oakland A's. He's an older guy though now. I mean, been out of the league now for years. So uh, he comes in, he touches all the machines and he sits down right next to me and he goes, I'm good guys, did my workout. He was joking around, right? Yeah. So I said, I start talking workouts and I start talking about like what you do. And he goes, and Dave Justice, says, he goes, I don't like to hit, work my upper body. And I said, I know that's why you don't hit a lot of home runs like you should be doing. And he goes, the, all the guys start cracking up laughing in there. I said, yeah, because you got warning track power. I said, you don't have Jose Canseco, Mark McGuire, Frank Thomas power where it's all barrel chested, big arms and booyah right yeah. and we start talking fitness and i start getting all these guys saying yeah well if you did this you'd be like that if you did this you'd be like that and i start explaining all these different things and these guys start listening right they're getting all excited and i'm saying oh yeah i've taken kids that run like this that now run three nines down the line i take kids that used to hit it you know 400 they hit it 500 and we're taught because 20 years ago people didn't train like we train right they didn't do when crossfit came out i'd already been doing that for 10 years we were doing all the Olympic lifting, all the gymnastics, all that. We did it all, right? When that came out, everybody's like, Bob, they're doing your workout. And I didn't believe in CrossFit because it's too many reps, right? I build athletes, not CrossFitters. If you're doing CrossFit to be an athlete, you're doing it wrong because it's too many reps. You need less reps, more weight, more power, more punch. It's one time. So you want to do Olympic lifting singles. So... The, the story is then Clarence, the head guy, hears all the energy going on in there, comes in, sits down, and he starts chiming in because I was like peeing on his area, right? Yeah. And it was like, he, now he's going to talk. Now he's going to talk to me and wanted to get me out of the room because I had their energy up. And that's, I learned that years ago, it, they feel like you're going to step on their toes. And that's what's taught me with the physical therapist when I talk to them to tell them I'm not here telling you you're doing it wrong I'm telling you that we can help your clients more by using the tools because that's the most difficult thing is people's egos they're worried about it getting you know job taken so that's another thing you have to work on when you go down there is hey I'm not here for the job I just want to give my tools to the, to you and let you use them the way you want to use them but I'll recommend a few things you should do that'll help your players if you're not doing them. So then you, you've already covered that. I don't want job thing, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah so, I got you. so that took me, that took me a long time to learn. Well, when are you going to Dallas to demo the team? <laughs> I would like to do that for sure. Yeah. That would be great. You said um, you're in California right now, right? I am. Yes. I'm sure there are right flights out- up next week. <laughs> <laughs> well I, the funny thing is my brother's been in there he's been in the facilities he's been over there and done some business and talked to some people um we just been sort of waiting for the right moment to to chat with mark uh, trying to gr- grow the things i've been growing and my blocks i just came out with my blocks a couple years ago so uh, a lot of things i just keep adding that's why you see in the background there's a couple different shelves of things there I have my mats, the blocks, the bands, and I've been adding little tools as I go because I'd love to be in the store someday where people come in to go into Dick's or whatever sports chalet or whatever big, you know, um, sports store where people could buy a tool and then reach out to a trainer in the area to help them, right? Because if all the trainers were trained using the BAM metric system, then they could work with you for 15 minutes to say, hey, what do you want to do? Are you here for a performance? Are you here for pain relief? Are you here for weight loss? And then here's a few things I would recommend you do. 
and we give voice to those people because they bought a tool. Because most people buy a tool and have no idea how to use it. Um, fortunately, nowadays, you have Instagram, you have things to go look at, right? But there's so much out there and so many guys doing things wrong that you can't do what a lot of these people are teaching out there on Instagram. Like people go, okay, I'm going to get fit. And they go follow someone. And they're, who are you following is the question. Are you following the right person down the right path? Or are you going down a rabbit hole that you should not be going on? And there's a lot of rabbit holes out there. So I'd like to have a sports area that people come into. They get their tools that they need. And then they make a phone call to the trainer in the area that would actually help them on a Zoom call for 15 minutes. And in my area, I was in sports basement. So I was giving away 15 minutes at a time during COVID. So people would buy my tools in the store and then they would call me and I'd do these live Zoom calls with them and going, hey, what do you want to do? You know, what are you trying to accomplish? And then help them. So that is another way we could really change healthcare because we'd be in all the stores, right? And we have Kaiser or the big medical doing it. So we're, we're, we got it kind of everywhere. We're giving the tools away, whatever we're doing with it. And you're actually helping people across the board get better, feel better, and not be a fitness person. This isn't fitness. You can do a lot of this stuff with your clothes on. So it's not a matter of like, hey, we got to tie up the shoes, got to put on the fitness gear, spend an hour, three times a week. No, 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 no. I just want you to brush your teeth out whatever you're wearing. So feel better and, you know, go do what you like to do, whatever that is, you know. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. I love that. I guess one other thought before I ask you my last question is, have you ever thought about doing like uh, workplace consulting with like, cause I feel like it'd be an easy in to HR departments to make employees who have like office jobs. I guess COVID kind of wiped out you, office jobs, but. No, no, no. You got it. Corporate wellness. That's what they call it. Yeah. Corporate wellness. And I'm actually trying to work a deal right now with Lucas Films. Um, I'm, I've been talking to the head of HR, but things take time. I've been on them for two years mm. and because of COVID, they shut me down with what we were going to do. Um, but I'm literally getting that to happen. And my tools are perfect for corporate wellness. Like if you had employees of a hundred, 500, whatever it is, you give them the tools as like a Christmas gift bonus here, and then run a zoom call but I could train a trainer for their area to take care of that company where I wouldn't have to do it. But nowadays with Zoom, I can do it. So I can spend time once a week doing it, or we could go three times a week for half an hour. We can do whatever that employee wants, set it up, but the trainer could do the training right there live, teaching them, hey guys, we're gonna do our wall windmills. Now let's do our runner stretch. Now let's do our push ups. Now let's do, and we go right through that live on camera. Corporate wellness is the best. So that's, if you're asking like before, who out there could help me with, let's run a corporate wellness program at your company and watch what happens to your employees. All the neck and shoulder injuries that people are having, it's because of all the computer work and the texting. Like this is one of the things Lucasfilms uh, really wanted to talk about is how many suicides go on per year. Okay. Why is that? They're in blackout rooms doing video, right, for the movies, and they don't get enough light, and they're hunched over, and they start to feel really anxious, and they can't get rid of that feeling. I explained to her how we get rid of it and what we do and why, because corporate wellness, people say we have a corporate wellness program, and they give you a uh, gym membership. That's not corporate wellness. I hate when I hear, yeah, they're going to the gym now. What are they doing at the gym? right? You could send them anywhere. They have no clue what they're doing. I want them to go there and brush their teeth properly. I want them to dental floss. I want them to do these things that's going to help not have a cavity because they're going to go to the gym and they're not going to brush right. And they're going to have pain. And then it leads back to now they're not going to the gym because they hurt their back or their shoulder or their whatever else they're doing. Right? So um, yeah, you're talking corporate wellness. Yeah. Yeah, man. I just, I think that's a good idea and I'm glad that you're already on it. I'm just, I'm excited for you because I feel like you have a really, really, really good idea that can help a lot of people. And it's like at the beginning, like this is like, um, <laughs> like the people who heard about like Jeff Bezos 
starting Amazon in like 2000, 2001. And we're like excited mm -hmm. for him, you know? I can see like bad metrics being huge in like 10, 20 years. And it's just like, dude, you were on my podcast. <laughs> it, it just takes the right person to get you to the right next person to get you to the, that's what I've been missing because I'm literally hidden. I'm, uh, nobody knows I'm not on TV. I'm not out there enough that people would go, oh, that's what it's for. Oh my God, I should get that for my dad. I should get that for my mom. Oh, I should be doing that. That's what I'm, that's what I'm excited about uh, is trying to find that right person to take it to that next level. Because if we literally did, like you said, corporate wellness, got into the medical and then got into a bunch of stores after we had all the trainers certified it's a it's a no-brainer it's a win-win and it's not something that's a quick fix this isn't something that's going to be around and then gone these are movements that you will do no matter what for life so it's not going to change the wall windmill and the runner stretch are standard movements and it'll never change because there's no other way to move that body because that's how it's supposed to be moved you can't do it on a computer you can't use a, a machine to do it. You have to do it yourself to improve it. And uh, that's why I picked these certain movements is I thought about how the body moves in all planes of motion and how to improve it that way. Mm. So. Yeah, I love that. Well, I got one last question for you and it requires a bit of pretext, a little unrelated to basically everything we've been talking about, but <laughs> okay. if, um, not if, you know how there are some people who have, you know, a fixed mindset, they're not willing to accept help and they're not willing to accept change. And that's just huh? how they've lived their whole life. Sometimes they die like that. Other times they change and they're, they go to more growth mindset, willing to accept help, willing to accept change. In your opinion, what is the catalyst that causes that change? The why. You got to know why you're doing it. Mm. But if they don't know why, they will not make that change. And you have to go deeper and deeper and deeper. So the first session I have with anyone, I'll put them on the treadmill and we'll start walking. And I'll ask them all the basic questions to get them going. But you have to keep asking more questions and diving deeper and asking more questions and diving deeper and staying with that person and asking more questions, but listen to what they're saying and probe deeper. And eventually when you get the why, I'll tell you one story. I had a kid that was brought to me as an athlete and the dad brought him. Kid did not want to be there, I could tell. So the first session I had with the kid, I took him and I said, let's go have lunch. And he goes, have lunch? I said, yeah, I know you don't want to work out. Just don't tell your dad. Let's go have lunch, okay? So we leave. I go sit there and I start talking to him. He's a 16-year-old boy. What a 16-year-old boy is like? 16-year-old girls. girls. <laughs> so we start talking. Let's when I'm in shape, man, the girls love my arms. The girls love my abs. The girls love, and we talk girls and da, da, da. And he says, hey, let's go back to the gym. And I said, no, no, I know you don't want to work out. So I pulled it out of him to say, no, no, I want to work out. But you didn't, I could tell it, but you didn't want it to. He says, no, 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 I want to, I want to go. So two weeks later, the dad comes to me and goes, what have you done to my son? <laughs> He's working out at home. He asked me for a pull-up bar. He wants this. He wants that. And he's into it completely. Okay. So he went from not wanting to do it to all out. Okay. Because he found his why. He, he didn't have dad's why. If dad wants him to be a better athlete. He wanted to get more girls. So he went and busted his ass and he found his why. So you got to find your why and that'll get you going every day. Because if you don't have that, it's a struggle to get up early in the morning, <laughs> yeah. you know? So, uh, and sometimes you got to go around the clock. You know, today's one of my early days is going to be four to probably 12 tonight. So it's just yeah. one of those long days, but you just deal with it because I know my why. I'm trying to do certain stuff and it takes time and passion and, you know, consistency. And you, you got to do it when it's hard and uh, just keep jumping those hurdles knocking them over, climbing around them or going under them, but keep moving. Uh, so there you go. And that's, and that's my whole thing is my company's BAM motion. BAM motion is what it's been called for years. I, li I literally changed the name to metrics just lately is what I do is metrics, but it's like, keep moving, 
motion is lotion. It makes your body feel great. So, and that's not my saying. It's been around for years. Uh, so anyway, it's been great being on your podcast. Really enjoyed being here today and chatting with you. Absolutely. So, is there anything else you want to chat about before we sign off? Uh, no, I just hope we inspire some people to reach out to me and really, you know, let's try to make a change here. And it takes, it takes a village of people to do it. You know, it's, it's hard when you're a single person to meet those Mark Cubans and, and meet the Kaisers and meet. So I know there's somebody listening out there today that knows somebody in the medical industry or knows somebody that knows somebody to share it with other people. So if you're sharing this stuff with other people, you're going to make them feel better. And so you're doing something good. And one leads to two, leads to four, leads to eight. And uh, we all win. So there we go. Yeah. Thanks again. All right. Well, if you guys are listening to this and you liked what Bobby had to say and you are interested in his products, one, go buy them and use them for yourselves and listen to the videos. But two, share them with everybody you know. If you happen to know Mark Cuban or somebody else who is business savvy and in the sports world like that, make sure to connect them to Bobby and let's get this product out to the world because it really sounds like it'll change a lot of lives and a lot of chronic pain. Bobby, thank you for coming on the show. Guys, thank you for listening. As we always ask, Send this show to one to three people you know need to hear the message. Shoot us a five-star review on iTunes, and we're out.